Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm Calder Ness. This week we're going to be talking about the road to worlds. We got to save the day for the Hero Clicks 2024 World Championship. Talking some DC Masters of Time. And that's right, WizKids wants to hear from you, you, the fans of Hero Clicks in this new survey. This is episode 504. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks help. I have the high ground. Oh yeah, you may have the high ground. It's over, Simeon. Yeah. Instant deadpan. Over oh, oh, six yeah. oh, people yeah. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. Simeon will be able to make that out. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm going to make hero clips like that forever. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clips is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Yo. Another day. Why don't you go day. ahead and uh, jump on into what made you happy this week, my man? Ooh. Well, it's been a heck of a week. Um, we like to keep it light on the show, so I'm, I'm going to be fairly brief, but... Uh, I lost my grandfather this weekend, and it hasn't been great. It has not been great because he was a, a dude that brought a lot of light and brightness into the world, and so his passing's been rough. But I think that just reminds you of like how much somebody's like touched you, and uh, like how much you loved them when you like feel that way. So that's been rough, but uh, I do have you know some good things going on too. I get to see a bunch of my family this weekend, and uh, Willie Carlisle will be in Omaha this Friday. So, Oh, man. That's exciting. There you go. I am so, so sorry. That is really tough, Simeon. Um, but I'm glad that you were at least able to yeah, see some of your family and old Willie Carlisle coming back to the Omaha area. Yeah, it's like he loves this place or something. I guess, I I guess so. I guess he really likes it for some reason. <laughs> no, uh Willie's going to be a great time. It'll be great to get away and uh, just kind of forget about stuff. But no, in, in actuality, like loss is a, like a part of life. And I know listeners out there don't want to be bummed out. So I'm not going to keep harping on it, but it does suck. And uh, it's something that we all, something that we all have to go through from time to time. But it's, it's nice to just keep uh, all the fun memories and stuff in mind instead. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Dang. That's right, man. So this will be how many times have you seen Willie Carlisle now? I know you, you've at least number three. Number three. Okay, that's what I was curious about because I know you've seen him a few times in concert. Right on. Yeah, he's. Uh, more, I, and I also. Nice. I just got uh, my Willie Carlisle fan swag bag in the mail that I ordered back in like oh my December. Gosh. Nice. Uh, so, got his coloring book, which like has all the chords to his songs, and it has like a little kind of like a little story of like how he came to write the song which is really i always find those like really interesting those insights into like what like was the creative process behind a certain song and then um i got his new album critterland on vinyl so ooh, so that that was a fun little thing that i got to come home to today it's oh, already pretty signed though and i so i don't even have to take it to like the venue and be like please sign this i don't even have to do that well, that was nice of him. He's just like ripping through his sign a bunch, being like, yeah, right. Same I imagine shot. so, yeah. yeah. I imagine it was just like another album going out. Here we go. He's got like a stack of like a couple hundred of them or something. He's like, yeah, I'm going to make someone's day. Let's go. Let's let it rock. Hopefully you got a, a good signature, an early in the day signature and not a uh, little squiggle, squiggle, wiggle line. Yeah. In like the this double digits instead of like the triple. Yeah. Somewhere around there. But right on. Yeah, this uh, this weekend, kind of a lot of the same reasons. Just got to see a bunch of my family. We uh, they came down for the Super Bowl, so we got to hang out. Convinced my sister to play Hero Clicks on Sunday. It's always good to have her do that. Made her play Kong and Giant Girl. Uh, the theme was the uh, be an NFL sports team, so it was four hundred golden. So that was pretty fun. I played the Patriots. You can see those teams up on Facebook right now, but. That was just a blast, kind of hanging out with everybody. We spent all day, pretty much all day Saturday, uh, going to Spielbound and just playing board games and just ripping into some fun board games there. We played, we always start with Betrayal 
typically. I can usually convince everybody to play one round of a trail, which is pretty fun. But then we play this game called Nut Hunt, which is a really fun game, slightly complicated, slightly not, where you're squirrels in a forest in a uh, tan like forest grid setup thing here. And you can't actually move your squirrels at all. The only way to move them is when the fox moves into one of their spaces, they have to scatter into an adjacent space. So it's this really tough like strat strategy game because you're also kind of building trips in the way of like ticket to ride as well. You're trying to get from one squirrel nest to the other squirrel nest that you can build. And it like there'll be kind of destination cards that says go to to whatever sleepy hollow or the big mushroom. There's all sorts of like weird tiles in the game mat. And so it's really difficult to like actually complete tricks um, because you're trying to like get your squirrels there. But it's again random. The fox moves and can scatter them and force them out of there. But then you also want the fox to move into your space. So you can move your squirrel somewhere else. It's a really fun game. I would say like it probably took me about 15, 20 minutes to like totally understand the game and then be able to try to teach people to the best I could with just leaving the book open and like referencing it. So for anybody that would like a new strategy game, I, I recommend Nut Hunt. That was pretty dang fun. So that sounds pretty you interesting. Know, it was. It really was. Combining it was like odd. multiple kind of game elements like that. It's not easy. It's pretty. That's pretty much how it felt. The the uh, the fox has this great flavor text in the in the rule book where if the fox hits the edge, he bounces toward like back toward wherever he would have hit. Um, and then in the rule book, it literally says, imagine this not so much like a forest, but as a wrestling ring. And Dwayne the Fox Johnson is bouncing off the ropes. Oh, I'm like, no. that is hilarious. I love this. <laughs> this game is awesome. Okay. So <laughs> like the fact that that is in just the rule book refers to the Fox Meeple as Dwayne the Fox Johnson. I was like, this is this is fantastic. I love it. So yeah, going to Spielbound is always a fun time. So it was just great hanging out, playing board games, just jamming. All right, guys, we have actually a decent amount of news to get to, even though we're hitting the end pseudo end of our next phase spoiler season there are still more next phase spoilers coming up don't get me wrong but we have some really cool things that whiz kids has been doing recently so really quickly there is going to be a they do call this a fan survey series where they make a note to say, click the link below and tell us a little bit about what you'd like to see in the next DC set. It asks you a little bit of questions like kind of how much product do you typically buy, how long you've been playing for, and then it finally kind of gets to the real meat and potatoes, which is what would you like to see in the next DC set. Now, I personally I haven't film, filled this out yet. I'm still brainstorming a little bit. I want to think of some good answers. But I know a lot of people are sharing it around. I've seen it from like Realms to Facebook to all over the place to Reddit even. So I think it's making its way across the Heroclix universe. And hopefully there's some pretty good insight from the Heroclix community that's uh, being added to this fan poll. But Simeon, what would you like to see? Now, keep in mind, Masters of Time is probably set in stone. So it'd probably be like the next, next DC set would more than likely be actually something you could control. But... As far as like Master of the Kingdom, I was pretty sure that's locked. That's locked in. I don't think we can add anything to it now. No. But not yeah. Not like not not when we're seeing sculpts and yeah. solicits and Actual, stuff. Actual like physically or yeah. printed sculpts showing up in pictures. Um Yeah, I filled this out. I can't remember exactly what I said, but I know I've I think in when I think of DC, um obviously I think of a lot of Vertigo series, those tend to be more interesting to me i love batman year one it's like okay that kind of not like a set based around that but that kind of aspect like the origin story kind of thing of like all the dc heroes would be cool i know when they when they asked this question about marvel i said like a set that was just like and also dc masters of time had already been announced at that point so i was just thinking the marvel version of that so i was like what about it like heroes through time for Marvel, because there's a lot of like 1602, there's like the the Five Ronin series or whatever that one's called. I really like that one where it's just like feudal Japan versions of characters. 
uh, like Wolverine doesn't heal from his injuries. He's actually just like seven identical brothers. And so each time one dies, another one comes to like get revenge. Uh, that's like a really fun story. There's a uh, Deadpool pulp, which of course is like similar kind of like timeline and stuff. Um, but for the DC one, I think section eight would be hilarious. You get like six pack, get, uh, I can't remember if it was Ennis that wrote those stories, but, um, section eight is just like the, the biggest like losers that you could possibly have in like comics. Okay. And it's, it's, uh, it's funny at times. It's mostly gross kind of stuff, but there's a uh, one of my yeah, it was Garth Ennis that created him. Uh, one of my favorite guys, obviously Dog Welder, just has like an incredibly fun name, and he yeah. just does exactly what his name is. Like he welds dogs to people. So yeah, and then there's a character named Friendly Fire, which is just a a dude that is basically havoc except he can't control where his blasts go. And so he's usually like hitting his own teammates or himself. And yeah, mm. it's, it's characters like Era- that. Terrifying. They're yeah. like a real, they're like somehow worse than the great lakes Avengers is oh, what I'm hearing. Yeah. They're like, they're not meant to like succeed in any capacity other than being like comedic relief. I think nice. And <laughs> cheese. Okay, so your your vote is for like section eight. That would be a, hol- a hilarious sub theme. I do like the idea of like a shared trait of some like terrible powers or just something fun or just all being super bad in their own way. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Like very cheap characters that aren't like they're not like main attackers, but they do something interesting yeah. for your team. Nice. I think when I eventually fill out the survey, it'll probably be something. Along the lines of, yes, please, anything and everything Lantern related. But I would definitely like to see some more Freedom Fighters. We have not gotten the Freedom Fighters made in some time. And we could get that entire team fleshed out since it was like Crisis is when we got Uncle Sam. So I would like to see some more like Freedom Fighters type of stuff. With that, just an overall... 1940s 50s era dc where we get like the jsa so i'd be kind of down for a freedom fighters jsa type of thematic set some real golden agey pulpy style heroes i think it'd be a ton of fun that's pretty much what i would go with i could echo what i've said every time someone's ever asked me what i want for a dc set and that's two by two colossal green lanterns where they have giant constructs yeah i'll I'll never not stop saying that till the end of time because that would literally be just again so awesome now you throw in like hero glow on them or something oh it'd be incredible that's a new speculation that we have to open up for each yeah new sculpts is is this hero glow is it not will it glow in the dark yeah uh judging from judging from the box art i don't think at the DC uh, Masters of Time. I don't think it's going to have Hero Glow, but... I feel, I feel like it would be advertised if yeah. that were the case. It's not impossible. It's cool. just, I don't know. That Raptor... Unlikely. That Flash Raptor, bro. Oh, that yeah. could glow up oh, on a big orange base. Oh, baby. Oh, that would look cool. But getting a little ahead of ourselves before we get into stuff like that. Really quickly... We have dates for Heroclix Worlds 2024. This is awesome. This is absolutely massive, you guys. We've never gotten Worlds dates this early. And if we have, sorry, I forget. But this is like, seriously, February? Yeah, dude. Seven months, man. Mm -hmm. So Worlds is going to be Thursday, September 12th through Sunday, September 15th at Graceland in Memphis, Tennessee. We know date, time, place, all of that, ladies and gentlemen. So that is incredible. I am literally so stoked that we already know what it's going to be. We can already start arranging days off, travel plans, et cetera, et cetera. And people know. We all know. And then also, just another shout out. This article goes into a pretty neat little journey of Mark Berger here. He's a fan intern finalist. And really quick, he drove by Rosebud. You can see the Rosebud Casino. And one of his pictures is the Nebraska-South Dakota border that Rosebud is on, that reservation. So that's pretty cool. I like that. I think a little uh, little shout-out to a place that I know I've been to, which is pretty fun. 
So he also has some really cool pictures of like the Bass Pro Pyramid and then the Graceland Guest House, as well as just kind of recaps his battle royale winnings and battles throughout the weekend, which is really cool. So yeah, shout out old Mark Berger there for writing up this fun little kind of blog here. It's really fun. Yeah. You no. Know? Yeah, they they do say um, the room block code isn't out yet, so don't quite book your hotel Ooh. at Graceland yet if you're planning on doing that. The room blocks and like those codes will not only get you a cheaper price than what they normally probably charge, but it also give you the option for that uh, TCB package, which I think everybody wants if you're staying at the guest house. That's it's just free. It's like kind of literally free money. It's yeah. just such a no just... to get it. If you don't have these figures, here they are for way stupid cheap. If you already have them, then here's like this instant rebate on your room, essentially. Yeah, like it's it's just literally so nice. It's so convenient, so great. Like, holy smokes. But all right, guys, the meat and potatoes of the episode. We've already talked about some amazing things so far. But you just you can't you can't beat learning information about a brand new set, especially a set that I am literally so excited for. We are both really excited for this set. So DC Hero Clicks Masters of Time. The time is now. Whether you love the wonders of the future, the American West, or sword and sorcery, DC Hero Clicks Masters of Time has them all. Bring in some of the coolest DC comic stories and heroes linked to time travel, all to one set. The return of Bruce Wayne gave us awesome new versions of the Caped Crusader. Jurassic League gave us the largest Justice League we've ever had. And what could be cooler than Booster Gold teaming up with Superman? Okay, well, honestly, a lot of things, but that is still pretty cool. Every brick of Masters of Time comes with eight standard five-figure Heroclix boosters and one special oversized Jurassic booster. Inside every Jurassic booster, players will find three figures, including a colossal figure on a 2x2 Hero Hooks base and a team-up card. You get a team-up card, you get two standard figures, and then one colossal figure. Master of Time is out of this world, so you'll want to dial your friend Rip Hunter so we can time travel you straight to release day. Honestly, kind of wish. Wish I could. Uh, what better way to test your metal against opponents than with these never-before-seen Dark Knights of Steel chase figures? And then, I mean, like I said in the past, I'm not the biggest Dark Knights of Steel fan, but they look cool. Even if the writing for a story isn't good, doesn't mean they can't be fun and cool Hero Clicks figures at the very least. So we already see like what Wonder Woman looks like. We'll get into her in a second. But the set, here's what uh, here's what the set's made of here. 16 common figures, 15 uncommon figures, 12 rare figures, and three rare primes, 13 super rare figures, and then two super rare primes, seven chase figures, one ultra chase, and then 10 colossal sized Jurassic figures exclusively in Jurassic boosters, nine legacy cards on the brick topper, and 10 team up cards that are going to be in the Jurassic booster. So I assume there's 10 Jurassic figures and there's 10 team up cards. Probably means they're always going to like correlate with whatever Jurassic figure you pull. Simeon, what do you think, man? Just yeah. offer it before we get into like all the other details because there is a lot more to this set. But already, I'm excited. What do you think? I'm yeah, I'm excited. Uh, MSRP is one ninety oh, ninety two. Yeah. This is a big point so, of contention. Yeah, big big, big thing here. This totally glazed over that... it. I apologize. I was not trying to do that. No, th this is like I, I'm going to go into a few things that I've just seen like comments about MSRP being a little bit higher, and by a little bit, I mean like. $15 higher, I think. I don't know. Not quite even $15, I don't think. MSRP isn't necessarily what these will sell for at your local game store. Hopefully, they don't charge you full MSRP. Um, but if they do, then, like, yes, this is increasing. Uh, you're not losing out on that many more figures, and you're getting a 2x2. Two two. And I will say, from the size of the box, this is another point that's been brought up. A lot of people are speculating on how big these figures are because we do have a side-by-side -side digital rendering with the 2x2 two two next to the like standard size figure. So if we go by that, these figures are a little bit bigger than the AI sculpts with way more dynamic sculpts, I'll say. Uh, it looks to be like AI and... Yeah, I mean, AI, uh, XDPS, yeah. yeah. 
they were pretty small. I think these should be more along the lines of like the Mighty Thor colossal yeah. figures, well, right? Judging from the size of the, so we have a picture of the brick. It is two normal boosters deep. And then at least two normal boosters wide. So these bricks, because it's eight boosters plus this super booster, these bricks are actually going to be the size of what a like twelve booster brick would look like physically. Like the width is going to be like twelve boosters wide instead of ten. Uh, yeah. Um, you're not getting twelve boosters worth of figures, obviously, but that does make me think that maybe these two by twos are a little bit bigger than the, like the AI XDPS ones and we don't have a side by side of the actual figures all we have is the digital rendering so I'm assuming the scale's pretty much the same for the digital renderings it probably will like line up but I think until we actually see one of these pop open I don't know I'm a, I'm a reserve judgment on that aspect yeah. but yeah the, the 79 figures the super booster that doesn't just come with like an object or I don't know that. I mean, that's all the, the mighty Thor ones came with was a character yeah, and an object. That's all they had. So yeah. this is so, already so much better than, than the mighty Thor set, which is the last time we had a super booster set. So I definitely appreciate that. Yeah. What do you, I don't know. I want to collect all of the colossals. Oh dude, I need them so bad. Like, and we can, we can talk about them a little bit. We've already seen the the bat sore guy. He looks yeah. awesome, but we kind of see a more three dimensional, like real sculpt versus digital render, and it looks even better. Like man, the depth and the detail in the bat like sore guy. He's oh, awesome. Man. He's awesome. Have you seen Doro Hidoro? That like a uh, anime. Not Doro Hidoro, no. It's like the the Kaiman which is the, the lizard man. Um, Kaiman's like a type of alligator, and he's got like an alligator head. This reminds, for whatever reason, this reminds me of that character so much. He just oh, looks sure. like this like massive alligator with like huge bulging muscles, all these like bones. Literally like the digital rendering looks cool, but then you look at the actual figure and the, it looks so much better somehow. Uh, the like way that his like cowl is like stitched to his chest like shirt thing i don't know there's so many details than this like figure that are just awesome it looks it just looks so incredible the the next one is the super sore and he's probably going to be inside like sideways because he's more long than he is tall but it's like him doing like a superman punch like flying up both feet off the like this is probably the most dynamic colossal sculpt we've seen where it's like both feet off the ground, flying toward you, one hand out, punching you. I don't know if like, I've seen a colossal where it's cool. Is Living Tribunal like fully floating? I mean, yeah, he is. That is true. It's but like he's hovering. just like yeah, his this guy feet is like... are right above. Like his soles would be right above the base. Where this dudes are like lateral to yeah. it. You know, like like man, that's cool. It's just I don't know. This is way just a crazy sweet dynamic sculpt that we've seen. Like it looks. I like. I'm saying this about a Superman character, guys. Like, this means... Well, it kind of means a lot. Uh, it is also funny that he's bald. I know he's bald in the storyline, because he's like a whatever dinosaur or a herbivore, um, but it's just really funny seeing him be bald. <laughs> seeing him be bald. It's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, dinosaurs don't have hair, but it's just like he, for sure, just looks the most bald. I also love Bat Sore is like wearing actual clothes, and then Super Sore is just wearing like only a cape. And then yeah, he's got like interesting his, coloring where like his, his feet are tinted red yeah. for some reason, and then he has like spray painted on his chest or whatever the S. Yeah, yeah, it is weird. Yeah, that one is odd. Wonder Dawn, yeah. she's cool. The I love Triceratops, Triceratops Wonder Woman. Yeah, she. I mean, she looks fantastic. Uh, she is definitely again gonna have to be sideways in that booster because of her massive like this dinosaur jaw sword she has and then this huge shield like it's really 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 cool i i dig this piece a lot unless unless they they unless. learned from uh from peggy cap oh okay and we're gonna have like figures that uh have like modular pieces that attach or something I would not be opposed to that if it means that we get bigger sculpts. You just have to, like, attach them together. I uh, think that especially has to be true with Aquaman because oh, 
he looks way too big for he at looks least the trident. tall. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the trident maybe or like that arm is going to have to get pegged into his shoulder or something because holy smokes, right. he's big. Do another great sculpt. We only get to see like the actual printed out like physical version of uh, the bat sore, but I really want to see this Aquadon or whatever his name is. The barnacles on like the trident, the like yeah. wrappings on it, the the scale effects on him. Like there's so much detail that I, I'm like, if the Batman 3D rendering turned out to look that good, I have a feeling that this one might also be like one of my favorites. Yeah. And then of course, Next up, dude. Oh yeah. The the I don't know what kind of the duck bill dinosaur. D- Dilapalosaurus or whatever it is, Green Lantern. He looks like straight up. He's gonna mug you. Like he's like looking me. Oh, he's yeah. angry and he's like just stanced up, big like ginormous bone axe mallet construct thing that he's holding. You know what he looks like? What's he that? looks like at the end of Space Jam when all of like the Looney Tunes get like power ups. He looks like a uh, Daffy Duck has like some sort of like super muscle giant power up where he yeah. just becomes like this like massive superhero kind of looks like that he okay i can see that it just but like he yeah, is his face is kind of big goofy. duck bill his yeah. face is so goofy but then he's just jacked and just stanced up like he's gonna throw down a whooping on you dude oh, like yeah. it's hilarious there's some anime main character kind of energy coming off the sculpt with the like massive tooth hammer thing i love the hammer that's just so sick it's it, so, it's yeah. so cool it looks just like he shoved a bone inside of a giant tooth but it's also a green lantern construct so it's like glowing green uh yeah. this is like where speculation hopefully we get some hero glow in this set um him in the flash <laughs> would it may like look amazing with some glow effects but at least we know that there's like translucency going on I also agree. I think for Flash fans, the Flash Raptor also just is an incredible piece here. He's got these giant things of lightning coming off his arms and legs. He's hitting like the classic Flash running pose. Then he's got like lightning coming off his ears and everything too for like how like the normal Flash costume looks. Like, man, just another dynamic sculpt where he's just like full out sprints and just just imagining like a two by two being as fast as the flash is actually terrifying. Like, yeah, yeah I'm scared. This is really scary. <laughs> Just being then, huge. Yeah. Like not for nothing. The flash next to him that we see. Oh yeah. Also has like, he's like doing like a, a mid speed stop. Like he's yeah. slowing himself down kind of like pose, but also a lot of like lightning effect, just like on his feet there. Very true. Um, very, very true. Yeah. We see he's hitting the brakes. They, they put, like, a, a normal DC Universe counterpart next to each of these, uh, like, iconic, like, seven Justice League kind of dinosaurs. So we, we see an Aquaman, um, a Hal, uh, a Wonder Woman, which she's wearing, like, a cape. Interesting, like, look for Wonder Woman, in my opinion. I don't normally see her in, like, a black cloak kind of thing. Yeah, not usually. We have Superman that is very timid holding his cape he's like clutching his cape close to himself as if like a sudden chill like blew up his back or like maybe he like tore the back end of his britches of like the dc 75th superman skull i'm very happy about that (laughs) he's yeah he's like uh embarrassing like dream that he just had and he's like trying to cover himself with his cape instead of standing there like normal and then we have uh batman pointing he's just He's point at you. Yeah, he's just the accusatory Batman. Like scolding the Justice League, like, Blue Beetle, I told you to pay more attention next time. What's wrong with you? Yeah. It's very interesting. That's all for uh, the two-by-twos that we've seen, right? That's all for the two-by-twos. So what is that, six? One, two, One, three, four, five, six. Yep. Yeah, it's six. So we still have four left. Now, we haven't seen any of the villains from Jurassic League. I don't. I don't think there's any more heroes, is there? Because it's like it's like GL, because it's like the main, the Trinity have a little side story, and then it's Aquaman, Flash, and GL have a side story. So there's still like Giganto, Giganta, Bizarro, the Joker Zard, 
There is an Atrocitus and a Black Manta. So that's five right there. There's also like the main villain at the end. So if you want to read this and you don't want it spoiled, there's okay. another there's another say, like, pretty I, big I haven't read it, but I saw a pretty important villain. Yeah, I saw uh, the comic the scan and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So there's at least six or seven more like named characters they could make from this. So, you know, just throwing it out there. If it is going to be truly like each booster is Jurassic and they're all going to be from the Jurassic League, then we can probably safely say it's going to be like, I would hope to see some of the villains like Atrocitus and Black Mana look really, really, really cool in this storyline. So I'd really like to see them, the Joker Zard or the Bizarro dinosaur just to go against the Superman and Batman dinosaurs would also be really cool. But just looking at these and then thinking about owning them and just displaying them all. I really can't remember the last time we've had a set of colossals be a colossal, like truly, truly like a set of colossals to display. Because even like the AI ones, the XDPS ones were like, yeah, they're all like, they're all pretty much X-Men related, but these are like the characters from the one story they yeah. are in. Like they're going to make such a nice display piece. I literally... I cannot wait to get my hands on them. I'm so stoked. Oh. Every time I look at that Green Lantern one, I'm like, I, man, I hope I, he, I hope his dial is bad because I do not want to oh, have to man. pay a ton of money oh, for him. Man. But yeah, no, these are they're going to be hard to come by. I think I don't know what would you think the average price would be. So this booster is essentially two boosters, which goes for like, let's just say thirty six bucks would be like the bucks. average worth of like this booster but what do you think that people are going to say like the value is because of the these like justice league dinosaurs Dude, inside i feel like the average justice league dinosaurs are like, going to be like 50 60 bucks alone it's honestly and this like, might be the first set in a while that i actually buy more than like a case of because that's get quite a bit yeah honestly i wish you know, get rid of two more boosters. Give me another dinosaur yeah. booster. Honestly. Yeah. If I could like, if I could opt out of like the eight single boosters and only that's what buy I want. The, the two by two boosters. Yeah. It's true. Like, we I haven't seen much of yeah, the, the so uh, single base set, but not a ton. I do know mm-hmm. that I'm I'm definitely gonna want all the dinos. Need them. I just need them. Uh yeah, it's kind of getting to some single base figures here. We see Caveman Batman, who is also an insanely cool sculpt by himself he's got these bat wings he has what looks like a literal bat uh for the bat symbol on his chest yeah. <laughs> um but then he has just like a very normal bat belt like a very just normal bat belt yeah is, uh, just like what he has on his waist he's so, included with buckle and stuff like yeah all of this seems yeah very um handmade like thrown together kind of caveman style and then it was like also belt that would require incredible tooling that I don't have access Technology, to yeah. leggings and paint or leggings and boots that like I shouldn't have access to yeah. in this time period. So I'm so, almost curious. This is not so much like Batman, whatever, or a Batman who's cast into prehistoric yeah, times. Definitely feels. Yeah. Bruce Wayne got thrown backwards into time and had to hodgepodge the top of his outfit. I don't know. Uh, Let me get the Dick next Tracy Batman. Batman. I, I kind of want to call him Bat Noir. I, yeah. He's very, he's Pinstripe very suit. pulpy. Yeah. Uh, what do we call the that? Pencil, the Domino the mask. Pencil mustache. Love to. Yeah. Oh, the domino yeah. mask. The pencil yeah. He's mustache. got the, that Zorro mustache. The like little, oh, yeah. little pencil thin. He's got the the old trilby. Yeah. Yeah. This Just, one. This one's like, hey there, boy, applesauce. You see the new morning paper today? Nah. Like that's like this. Is how that Batman talks. He's just yeah. like. <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely. Oh, oh, I sure hope nothing bad happens to the old Zeppelin, huh? When he when he's about to punch Harley Quinn in the face, he's like, "Nice knowing you, toots." And then, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. It doesn't make the crack sound effect. This is back when it was bop. Bop, bop. was the sound go. effect when he hit somebody. Uh, and then we get bop, Batman, slimy, slimy, gross tentacle, uh, Doc Ock, Batman. It's the... He looks wet, man. Like I agree with you. He <laughs> yeah. looks wet. <laughs> for whatever reason, the first thing I think of when I see this is H.R. Geiger, the like guy that did Alien. Just looks oh, like sure. something he would have drawn. But uh, yeah, this is Omega Batman. We've actually had him as a chase before. Uh, back in the Batman's, I think it was just the Batman set. He was one of those uh, bat chases. 
And I know back when that set came out, he only appeared in a single panel. It was like a singular panel where he was just like there. I think this time around, if this is still Omega Batman, we've had more stories with him. I think he's actually appeared and like had comic continuity. So there's probably more interesting stuff to be had about him than just, I don't know. I am Omega Batman. I'm Dr. Batapus, and I'm going to get you, Peter Parker. Yeah, hopefully. He looks he looks cool and yet also off-putting at the same time. It's just something yeah. about it. I can't say I like the one red eye. That's very funky to me. It makes me feel like he's got punched in the side of the head and he's just bleeding profusely <laughs> in that eye socket or something. It's very... Very interesting choice by a DC for uh, for sculpt of character, but this guy's got to be like rare to super rare. We know he's not going to be a chase oh, yeah, since yeah. he's not Dark Knight's metal, but like just seeing how big this sculpt is, he's got to be like rare, super rare, or something like that. Um, it's yeah, heavily yeah. detailed. Speaking of the chase, though, we do get to see this Wonder Woman from Dark Knights of Steel, who man looks good. Like the detailing on this sculpt. All the I little we, things her hair saw flowing, the 3D rendering of this prior, right? I think we did. Yeah, I remember being like, oh, I want to like say we saw that like video metallic and stuff. Ago. Yeah, but we get an actual, the actual sculpt. I don't know. I it's cool. I mean, it's cool. The the reds pop, the blues pop, and then she's kind of got like all these bandages and stuff, where she's a little more, uh, I don't know, fighter ready. I guess maybe a little scratch on the arm. She's got yeah. bandage up over her, she's her left arm, standing on a, like a pile of shields and swords. Yeah. And the shields are metallic enough that they're reflecting like the golden like armor on her shins, which is like interesting. Ooh, yeah. At least it, that's what it looks like. I can't I really what you mean. Yeah. tell for sure. But that I think it from like the angle that this picture was taken. Yeah, it's like almost uh, reflective enough that you can like not like mirror quality, but it does seem to be mirroring some of the uh, colors on the rest of her outfit. Ooh, and then then we get chalkboard boy. Yeah, man, Mr. Mr. Rip Hunter saying, yeah. hey, guys, sometimes things will split off like this. See the chalkboard. <laughs> this is the main timeline. And then this is the I don't know what they call it in Loki. It's a variant timeline or whatever. Ooh. He's telling them about Loki. Yeah, spoiler, sure Loki, Loki might have set up for the best Marvel movie to come out in the last 10 years. Ooh. Um, spoiler, spoiler. Really, because I didn't say anything else, but. If you know, you know, uh, I will say this Rip Hunter, his face structure, like not even going to get into like the outfit detail and stuff, which is very cool. His face outline and like structure. I know they're not basing this off of like an actor or something, but like, holy cow, if this is how it turns out, that is like some of the most well detailed face like stuff that Heroclix yeah. has done in a long time. It actually what? like if I like just squint a little bit. I could believe that this was an actual human being. Like this is insane. Like the eyes and like the eyebrows and stuff, the shadowing. Like either they Honestly, have a yeah. ridiculous expert taking photos, um, or like the sculpt department just absolutely knocked this one out of the park. Also, I love that. I know I was skeptical, but I'm so glad that the chalkboard seems to have stayed on like the sculpt. Yeah, that is so cool. It's it like, actually a, that sick. 3D effect like that actually makes it to the uh to the figures uh we get a look at it looks like old bat noir here is going to be part of the master of time play at home kit batman so the this play at home kit is going to have the bat noir batman figure one legacy card and then one double-sided map Ooh ah pretty classic play at home kit here that we've seen in the past so pretty fun they'll know exactly what's in it it's old bat noir here pretty yeah. cool and then mm-hmm. the release day OP kit looks like that is going to be prehistoric Batman, which is pretty cool. Yep, we're calling. So, uh, they're just calling him straight up Batman. Batman. Uh, yeah, everybody's just all being of them called are just Batman. Batman, Batman. We're giving them a little nicknames because obviously, like they need a distinction. But um, yeah, three copies of one limited Batman, five copies of a double sided Heroclix map, and then one addendum slash instruction sheet. Um, and then we do see. I guess on like the booster art itself so we've seen the top of the we only get to see the side the top and the front of the booster art obviously the bat sore is on like the super booster we see the prehistoric batman a batman riding a horse and then a just 
very like a uh, iconic normal Batman like swinging with his zip line right. thing. I don't know. Um, but then on the side of the art, we see prehistoric Batman. We see a Batman that looks like Blackbeard ish. Very, very pirate. pirate looking. Yeah. Uh, one has got a cowboy hat. I'm guessing like some sort of lonish ranger. Probably the one that's he on looks- the front of the art. With the with the duster, he looks very Van Helsing Batman, honestly, Ooh. with the hat okay. and duster. But yeah, he is riding a horse in the art, so it is probably just a Wild West cowboy Batman. And then we yeah, we see I think just a different angle of pointing Batman, which is main universe Batman, and then the bottom is a different angle of the Omega Batman. So Ah uh, yes. At the very least, we have six Batmans in the set. Plus the bat source, so at least seven Batmans. Seven Batmen. It's a good day. It's a good year to be a Bat fan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, because yeah. If uh, Bruce Wayne's your guy, that for you. Like, Ooh. dang, holy smokes! I will be interested in like real names because I wonder if I am curious if they'll all say Bruce Wayne. I, I'd or love what'll for uh, for pinstripe suit Batman to be Thomas Wayne, but probably not. Probably not. I don't know. I feel like that's only a flashpoint thing. What we have on the top of the booster, I'm I feel fairly confident in speculating that this is probably the Ultra Chase, since in every set that's ever existed that has an Ultra Chase, the Ultra Chase is on top of the booster. Here we see what looks to be a Superman classic flying pose with his double fists outstretched, flying up. And there's kind of a little circle thing behind him. Uh, yeah, there's been speculation quite, online. It, a lot of people are saying it's like uh, Christopher Reeves when he yeah. reverted time is like the common theory. Right, from the, the share music video, if I could turn back mm-hmm. time. I believe that sounds right, yeah. Yeah. To the good old days, yeah. the I won't lie, it doesn't really look like Earth to me, um, but maybe it, it will in person or something, so maybe it is that version of Superman uh, flying around Earth. I don't know what else it could be. When I, yeah. Uh, Looking at it again with like a little bit more zoom and stuff. Yeah, trying to enhance. It definitely you can definitely see like what appears to be like the cape and then like the uh, like when they do those minimalism like art things for a character and it's just like a rectangle with different like, colors. colors. Yeah. Yeah. That is the only reason why I think it's like absolutely Superman flying, because I cannot tell any detail, but I can see flesh color blue suit color, yellow belt color, red, like, underoos color, blue leg color, red boot color. I can see those colors in order, which I'm like, that's got to be Superman. At first, when I looked at it, I couldn't really tell, and I thought maybe, like, the Kal-El rocket thing. Um, which oh, would be, that was wild. Yeah, that'd I think that'd crazy. be such wow. an interesting, like, a ultra chase or whatever, if it was, like, this rocket crash lands and like uh you know maybe if you protect it for long enough then you get like some superman pops out or something baby superman pops out and yeah he's about as helpful as baby superman can be yeah butcher grabs him and like uses him to laser people down. yeah there you go uh but no i yeah after looking at it again i feel like it's impossible for it to be a rocket it definitely looks more like a superman flying pose just hard to tell maybe he's like escaping phantom zone or i don't know it's hard to tell what that backdrop is because we have a bad angle and also it's zoomed out yeah it's hard it's hard to see. it really is just hard to see the i mean that's pretty much it for masters of time that we can see shout out to old uh old joey p over at clicks nexus for getting a lot of this stuff off kind of looking at his facebook and using it as as the reference for everything here so I don't know. I'm stoked. Guys, let us know what you think of Masters of Time so far. It's super early. We haven't seen a dial yet, but we got the full solicit. We know what's in this bad boy. I'm pumped. I will say, uh, is nine legacy cards? That's less than normal, right? Usually we have 12, I want to say. It's like 12. Yeah, it's, it varies, but nine is on the lower end. Yeah, definitely feels like it's on the lower end to me. So I'm curious if that means we maybe get... I would like some Elseworld stuff. Like, it'd be cool. Um, just that's all I can really think of, like, right now for Legacy cards. For Masters of Time, yeah. Yeah, for Masters of Time. I'm trying to think of, like, the timey-wimey thematic stuff. 
of it all. Yeah. I mean, it does mention like booster gold, so we probably won't get one of my favorite. I, I would assume of, we get a main set booster gold. Yeah, if we like probably, a team we'll probably get a main set booster idea. gold, which hopefully we get a Ted Cord to go along with it. But I do love that Brave and the Bold uh, booster and Ted. That is really fun. I would like to see. I feel like we definitely get Booster Gold because he's a time traveler. That's like main story important to his mythos. But maybe we don't necessarily get a Ted Cord, even if we do get a Booster Gold. You know, I feel it's like possible. Yeah, I mean, you know, but I would hope we do get a Ted. They're I hope we get Blue Beetle. They're like great to buddy up, like buddy cop, like comic yeah. book with. But they're not like intrinsically. It's not every comic with Booster has Ted Cord in it, and every comic right. with Ted has Booster in it. It's just, it's just fun when it does happen. Right. It's just like, yeah, they're just a super good like comic book friendship. It's always been a blast. So, so we shall see what ends up happening there. Team up cards. Team up cards could pretty much be anything. I would love some cool thematic team up cards like Batman Nightwing or Batman and Robin like Batman and Robin needs to be a team up card or they just need to be more so designed to work well together but there's quite a few ones you know that you can probably make in this set there's only going to be 10 I wouldn't imagine they would be for the Jurassic League figures I would assume uh, I hope they would not. be yeah I, don't like, think I mean well I'll say figures. it'd be fine if they were like the Jurassic League figure team up but it, like, so you get like the figure, you get its normal card, you get team up card. But as long as it's not like Jurassic League team up, if it's ju- like Justice League team up, and like they include that character into the, ju- but I do not want to have to collect all of these characters to play them. Then with also, yeah, the team up cards. I'd they like should just the, be built to play with each other. Yeah, I'd like I'd like for the team up cards to be more uh, universal, not for like sure. not like uber specific to. I guess I, I don't want them to be universal in like this aspect where it's like, oh, you have the Flash team up card. Other characters can use super senses. I want them to be universal in the aspect of is like I can play them with more versions instead of like yeah, there are ten or no, yeah, there are ten, ten colossal figures, sized Jurassic ten colossal. figures. So yeah, I don't want the ten team up cards to be like if you have the ten other colossals, right? You can use these. So I feel like it's probably not uh, just the uh, the phrasing booster goal teaming up with Superman just probably guarantees that like that's going to be one of the team up cards more than likely, I would assume. Yeah. So. Be pretty fun. Uh, we've gotten what well, was the last set of team up cards for DC. They skipped Notorious. So it was Batman team up had team up cards fitting. So it's good to get some more team up cards for DC again here. Um, yeah, it's just cool. There are also a few other things that's up on the old Clicks Nexus page here that are just also kind of cool to shout out and go over really quickly. Both peacemakes, Peacemaker boxes are posted. We see the Wings of Eagly box, which looks pretty dang sick. It's got six figures on the side of it. Uh, Judo Master, forget his name, the nerd guy, uh... Yeah. Jedediah, some he's got some real special name, Cornelius or something like that. We see Peacemaker he's chainsaw. Uh, he's got the chainsaw. Yeah, I I think he uses it. Yeah, to kill the g- g- not Gorilla Grodd, totally not Monster Mala, whatever that ape was supposed to be. Um, maybe that was supposed to be Monster Mala. I don't know, but that's I know like that's I think that's what he used to kill it. We have the vigilante hiding behind the trash can, which we've seen the Peacemaker tapping on his helmet which is pretty cool. I love the inside box art with the John Cena peacemaker doing a big peace sign with Eagly next to him on the wings of Eagly. We see Eagly kind of doing a little flight thing. We see at bio. She has the rocket helmet. I assume for when she rockets <laughs> uh, through, which is a hilarious yeah. point in time. It's crazy. Uh, and then we see James Gunn's wife, uh, by an American flag graffiti wall. I also forget her name. Uh, agent, what's her name from suicide squad and the suicide squad and peacemaker and also black adam she's in a bunch of stuff i'm sorry agent not agent 13 agent whatever uh and then we see peacemaker project butterfly which looks like it's going to include the main butterfly villain inside the jar we see judo master eating the hot chip we see i again what is his name harkin 
Clemson, is that his name? Clemson Hearn? Herc yeah. Hearn? Is that it? It it's says kind that, of on the box. Yeah, the guy Anyways, like the leader of the Kind of the squad. weird. Yeah. And then we see Peacemaker doing the uh, Do You Want to Taste It full dance, which I absolutely love. We get a uh, dancing Peacemaker. We have so many dancing hero clicks now. It's kind of crazy, actually, when you think about it. But uh, John Economos. Wow. Yeah, no, it all says right here. Do to do. Yeah, so we have Harker. That's her name. She's Agent Harker, John Economos, Vigilante, Edibio, Peacemaker, and of course, Eagly. Yeah. These two box sets look really cool. The boxes look neat. I love the kind of patriotic Peacemaker colors, the first box, and then the top secret Manila Brown folder uh, government files of the second box is also really cool. Yeah. Next up, we get to see some box art for the Deadpool Weapon X set. Yeah, supposedly Enhanced. coming Enhanced. out before uh, Masters of Time. It looks like the... I don't know, Masters thing... of Time says, like, expected release July 2024. Yeah. And I don't know. Deadpool is May to April. It looks like the sculpt on top of the booster box of the Deadpool set is, I think it's Deadpool giving smoochies to death. That's what that looks like to me. Yeah, that's definitely with the skulls like around them. Like skulls around them, yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the side of the box, we've got Panda Pool. We have Camp Counselor Pool. Yeah, Park Ranger <laughs> Deadpool. Mime Pool. And then what it has to be Wolverine Pool because the amount of claws yeah. on his fist. Real good. Uh, be fun Wolverine Pool. And we get classic like. X, not X Force, but like uh, I guess X Force, like Shatterstar, I Domino. Mean, they are the X Force, yeah. Um, is that so Boom Boom? Oh, that's Boom Boom. Gun? Yeah, that's Boom okay. Boom. And I, I don't know who the dude with the orange is shirt that is. Not, is that not Sunspot? It, I guess, yeah, that could be Sunspot. He's all like blacked out, like how Sunspot normally yeah. is. Or am I? Is that not? Maybe. No, Domino with uh, with normal arm. Whoa. Yeah. Domino so, old with... school normal arm domino. Yeah. Prior to uh, her most recent run. I do love the front of the box is just like a fun art. It's a uh, Deadpool yeah, wearing cool. a fez in a robe reading the history of Wolverine book volume something. And then there's on like his bookshelf, there's a picture of Wolverine with uh, like Yukio or one of his wives from yeah. Japan. Uh, and then it's got also got his uh, his like Weapon X like helmet for that like yeah. trained him brainwashed him or whatever. So it's just a maybe some hints, maybe not of what could be in the set. I don't know. Perhaps if we get like a super Deadpool that's sitting in a chair with this exact same sculpt, that'd be cool. That would be kind of fun. Deadpool has been reading quite a few books in Heroclix sculpts, so that'd be a fun one that like just messes with Wolverines or something. We get to see the play at home kit, which is you're going to tell. I don't know what issue Wolverine. This is very iconic issue where he's got the one claws popped and then he's doing the, you know, come over here uh, kind of wag with the finger. That is like, again, a super iconic comic cover for Wolverine. And oh, then we get to see that um, as a figure. I think he's doing is he doing that the Hulk or is it a different one where we see like Hulk no, the, and the shimmer of the claws? This one specifically is not a uh, Hulk reflection. This is just Wolverine number one. Oh, is, okay. Uh, yeah, this is like okay. the, the Frank Miller 1982 Wolverine number one. And it was not the Hulk that um, he fa I can't remember what happened in that issue. But no, there there's a different one where he's holding the claws at a slightly different angle and you get to see the reflection in them. Okay. But this pose specifically is, uh, I don't know, just kind of creeper Wolverine where he's, yeah. he's like, creeper. Eh. like the smile's a little too big. Get over here. He, he, the face sculpt is very creepy. Wolverine is making some kind of face at me right now. It's yeah, strange. it's it's pretty accurate for that comic issue. Yeah, as far as like the the artwork, yeah, he's like pulls his mask down and he's like, I know what'll really get to him. <laughs> I'll just make the world's worst smile and yeah, motion for him to come closer. But uh, let me just see a pretty normal, uh, pretty normal looking Deadpool on that play at home kit box as well. Yeah. This kind of looks like a earlier version of Deadpool, but only say that because like the, the yeah. thicker sword, like slash knife that like him and Cable like used to run around with when the 
he first appeared, like the more serious Deadpool before he got so silly. But his costume does look way more modern, just like the tactical kind of like outfitting of it. Hard to say. It almost looks like they're on a duo base, but they're not. It's two different figures. Yeah, like. it's two different figures for that one anyways. Yeah, which makes sense. Then, it wouldn't really make sense for that. Uh, that Wolverine and that Deadpool. Right, no, those two specific really. characters. We're also sense already too. getting the, the really cool Predator handshake Deadpool Wolverine that we've seen. Oh, that's right. We I saw that at Worlds. That uh, next up, as we kind of see here, is we had to see another Iconics. We've already known that this one was coming out here for a while. And I love the box art on this, but this is the first appearance Wolverine Iconics featuring the Incredible Hulk, where... He's here, the world's first and greatest Canadian superhero. <laughs> and face the Wendigo. Wendigo. Yeah. Uh, Survivor the of this epic cover, face the Wendigo. The cover of the box being recreated with the sculpts, uh, the cover of the comic, is really cool looking. Yeah. Uh, it gets me very excited for what it's going to be. So we get to see, like, they... classic cat Wolverine whisker costume. Yeah. They absolutely, like just like one to one remade the cover with these sculpts and then the front of the box is like the cover recreated with like the digital renderings of the sculpt or it's not even digital renderings i think these are actual pictures of the sculpts but like the front of the box is just actually posed these figures for uh a recreation and then like the inside is the actual cover which is like obviously more accurate but it's pretty well detailed as far as like uh, one to one sculpts go, yeah. So this is another cool thing. You got to see a lot of cool iconics. It's just gonna be fun, man. Like, oh, it's looking good. But that is pretty much all the new product that I am seeing. Some new spoilers that we got this week. If you wanted to make sure you didn't miss any spoilers, make sure you go like the old Clicks Nexus page here, and also check out the Dial H for Heroes YouTube channel where we spoiled Ultra Chase Kevin this week as well go check out that video that was a ton of fun that was a great way to bring our next phase series to a close and it was an absolute blast to uh film and do that video guys so definitely go check that out if you haven't already but all right jumping into a little bit of a, a little bit of plug a little bit of time for a plug here fellas that's right, we're going to go answer some listener questions on the Discord, which means I'm going to shout out the Patreon. If you want to join and support Dialish for Hero Clicks, if you like what we do and you want to keep supporting that and keep letting us make the cool, dope Hero Clicks content that we make, feel free to support us over on Dialish for Hero Clicks, well, patreon.com slash Dialish for Hero Clicks podcast. On there, it's a ton of fun. It's a great it's a great old time. Five bucks a month gives you access to the Discord. where We have a ton of good discussion, a ton of fun inside jokes. If you want to talk about Detroit style pizza and whether or not it's pizza. And if you want to post pictures of the d most disgusting food I've seen on the planet, that is also what you can do on our Discord. Well, Simeon what does kind of food that. Is that. I, Simeon, that oh, is that's bread. Right. Detroit that's, style pizza. That's, that's, God, that's like bread. I was with told a it requires on it. three things it requires to be square, to be pizza, <laughs> and that. To come in a box, so in that is box. Detroit style pizza in my book. Did you actually make this? I no. hope not. Okay, I, Googled, I was like, "There's I no Googled way." Grossest looking pizza in the world, and it was like the okay. fifth result or something. Yeah, that sounds more more accurate because this just looks so nasty. It's like just yeah. bread with sauce and maybe Canadian bacon on it or something, with just a oh, craft man. single on top. It looks so gross. Like that's it genuinely I genuinely true. thought that like I would get at least at least Bill I thought would be like I don't claim that. And even Bill was like looks delicious. I, I would it. yeah, dude. I would choke that down any day and I was like, there is no way. Yeah, this man, looks I like cornbread that. with like jam and melted cheese. Like not even melted, burnt cheese. Burnt, Somehow they yeah, burnt it without true. melting it. I don't know. It's so gross. Yeah. It's like the worst sleep pizza. But if you want to have fun conversations like that, join the Discord, join the Patreon. We have a blast. We had a lot of new people to join, which is really cool. We also have Patreon exclusive merch. Really cool t shirt. Maybe you've uh, maybe you've seen it by now. Uh, we'll have to see if we if we post it or not yet. But a really cool t shirt uh, that was made by Ataneo Clark for us is going to go up. It's going to be a Patreon exclusive thing that you can get. 
it's super cool as well as like action tokens and everything else that we make for our patreon but let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions there are dozens of us dozens luke 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 asks fmk dice towers dice cups using your hands and rolling on the table like a normal adult oh what could you possibly mean luke with this question uh i mean i think we, people know my thoughts on rolling dice if you haven't seen the uh what yeah. rolling your dice says about you video go ahead and uh go ahead and check that out but i mean i think it's I, uh oh man my hardest choice is like i love the idea of a dice tower it seems so fun dice rolling down a tower they come out the little bottom i hate them in practice yeah in practice they're just dice cups way better in practice still kind of like annoying because a little yeah they're a little annoying like they I, just are. I, I don't know as hero clicks play like i tend to mess around with like the the action tokens a lot maybe i'll shake that like my dice before i even like say what i'm doing before i even declare like an action where i need dice so I'm already kind of like a fidgety hero clicks player like that. I feel like dice cups just make that worse because like there's yeah. a lot of like slamming. There's a lot of like scooping and like shaking for like way longer. Whereas like if the dice are in your hand, you're not going to shake that long. Hopefully. I don't know. Yeah. I think, I think dice tower is bottom list because bulky and like a lot of people try and slam their dice in the top and miss and then it's like, do you want me to re-roll that? And I'm like, well, technically you don't have to, but it's real weird that one die went down the tower and the other one, like, bounced off the top and landed over there. And so, yeah. Like, my OCD says, please, like, put both dice into the tower if you're going to put any of them into the tower. But the other part of me is like, you don't technically have to re-roll it because neither fell off the table. So, you know... I, I guess. I guess. Yeah, I think dice towers just have to be like bottom tier for me. In the bottom. bottom. Dice cups. I guess if you're gonna do it, just don't make it like a Stanley tumbler or whatever. Yeah, don't make sure slam like, them. Make, make sure, sure it's they're like, padded on the inside so it doesn't just yeah. Katink, katink, katink. Clang, 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 clang. Yeah, I agree with that ranking. Hundred percent. Hundred percent agree. Wesley R asks, "What is the secret sauce?" For a meta comp- for a meta hot or highly competitive team, is it just buying the carnage surfer broken pieces? Is there a build formula? What do I what do I need to know to go into a major tournament like Adepticon and win, or at least make top eight? Well, here's here's what I'll say at the very least. Most of the time, it's just being prepared and kind of being prepared for anything is always a solid team. So what I would do is just do research. Check out our like champion click streams. Look at the top builds. Go to HC units. Look what was winning that tournament, and then you can pretty much go see every single one of those games being played. Like any one of those teams, you can probably see play a game more likely than not. But yeah. there might be a few corner cases. Like you can probably see those on our stream playing a game, and you can figure out like what makes them good. George Masu's team is very interesting, and it's something I personally would run. I wouldn't have a clue how to do it, how to run it. But if I went back and watched like George play those games and like some of the interviews we did with him yeah. when he was on his like run up to uh, top eight, um, it like gives you a much better, well rounded idea. I would say secret sauce is practice. Obviously, you, you don't want to start with a bad team and like practice a bad team for a long time, but it would be practice. So, like, if you had like two months to prepare for Adepticon, which I think is about. No, less than about two now. Yeah, yeah. So we got like a little over a month uh, to prep for Adepticon. If you were doing so, I would go to HC units. I'd see tournament results and what was winning. I would start with the build that I felt looked the most interesting or the one I wanted to play the most, and then I would just start practicing that. That's if you have like no time, you know, like literally starting this moment. Um, but otherwise, you could be like George and just really like detectives really like the t- uh the mystery cards and just practice that team for the last six months and blow everybody out of the water with it like the only reason george didn't take that tournament was uh he just ran up against the team that hit its rollouts so right very true no i agree 
being well practiced, well learned, and also just like knowing the field. Like if you know back and forth what Carnage Surfer can do, what Spider Man can do, if you understand the reach of all these things and just have that locked in your mind, then you're able to properly prepare for a defense against those or how to take them out. So that's just another just big part. It's just like kind of knowing what's more commonly meta. And you don't have to just buy like Carnage Surfer or no. Masters of Evil. Uh, probably one of my favorite teams that got top eight was like Dylan Cassabombs, which didn't need Matt. Well, I guess I did use Masters of Evil, but still, like it was a really solid team where it didn't use some insanely like what I didn't use Spider Man and said he's like Wonder Woman Prime is a little different. You know, double caps are still cheaper than double Silver Surfers, you know, and then Dull Death Metal Wonder Woman and all that stuff where it's a slightly less expensive version of a few other teams. But there's all sorts of different teams out there. So don't ever get like corner cased and thinking I have to run like a symbiote, you know, Spider Man Carnage Surfer team, you know, just because that's what shout out Alex Mater, the winner, you know, like won with doesn't mean that's the exact team that you have to play. Play a team that fits your play style and that ultimately you feel comfortable with doing. And again, practice, practice, practice. Like when I played a very similar team to my Nationals team at States, I didn't make top eight with it. I do think the changes I made to go into Nationals were a lot better for it to be able to make top eight. But like I did not make top eight in Nebraska States with it. And then moving to South Dakota States, I made top eight and then lost my first top eight game. And then playing it at Nationals, I got 11 plays at Nationals. And like that's because I literally played that team or some version of that team so long. I knew all sorts of random, you know, and also talking with Ian and Simeon and everything about it, like all sorts of random, like little tactics you could do on turn one or this one or that one or what to do in this matchup. Like all that stuff, all that practice, that's the secret sauce, 100%. Yeah. Also, if, you're, if you think you need to buy a figure for a team, Maybe see if anyone around you or someone that's also going to the tournament has one to like borrow out. So there's no reason to buy, you know, like to spend five hundred to like six hundred dollars on like two Carnage Silver Surfers. Maybe see if somebody's just not running theirs and you can borrow one or two. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, that's another big thing for tournaments. Also, for whatever reason, I keep calling Joe George. I think it's just because like the Joe. J- like that sound. Oh, the ja. yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to call him Josafa from now on so I don't get it confused because Josafa is hard to <laughs> confuse with George. And for some reason, this is like the fourth time in the last like six months that I've done that to him. And I feel so bad. Yeah. I did it to like in person. I was like, oh, what's up, George? And he was just like, oh, like not much. And I was like, it took me like five minutes, and I was like, "Oh gosh!" I oh just no! Called, I I'm just sorry. called him George. Like, yeah, I had to go back up to him and be like, "I'm so sorry, man." Rough. I know your name. I just when I go to say it, the J sound. I promise. I promise. I know your name. I know yeah. who you are. Ah, uh, and then next question, old Wesley has here is two part question. Do you think we will ever get legacy cards for equipment or vehicles? Uh, equipment, I don't know. I doubt it since that doesn't have a dial, but I could see it for vehicles since they do have a dial. Man. But they also have the vehicle defense symbol, so maybe not. Since yeah. is, but, I mean, they legacied uh, characters. Duo. And stuff. Yeah, so I guess the, the symbol doesn't matter. So yeah, I could see it for vehicles. I would but love I do, to get some, I doubt it uh, get equipment, though. some old relics like legacied. If we're not going to get remade, like get the scorpion key, the. Um... Straight jacket was like a fun one. Oh, straight jacket would be awesome. OG Ock Arms. That was a cool one. Um, Iron Man briefcase. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool relics that I would love to see. I don't know if we ever will. I don't know. Yeah. I, I highly doubt we'll ever get the original like Infinity Gauntlet Gems uh, legacy when we have the ABPI ones that are just like so much more well rounded. But yeah, I think those ones could work. The uh, not nah, just straight up make Honda tank again, not nah, print reprint Honda tank. That's what I want. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, no, I could see it. I really could see it. But equipment is just like one thing where it doesn't have a dial and everything. But the Punisher van, weapon please, drops. please yeah. remake the Punisher van. Oh my gosh, the weapon drop. I mean, it does have a dial. Technically, yeah. Well, Maybe I mean, it works. But that that opens the door like gamma bomb. Some of those. Ugh. Old, uh, Ugh. What are what are those event dials and stuff? Yeah, dude. Ugh, an event dial. Don't legacy an event dial. Never mind. Take me. <laughs> don't do that. Please don't do that. 
Uh, second part of the question is the year is 2026. Ew, gross. I don't want to think about that, but okay. Uh, and everything that is currently meta is rotated out. What from the current modern world you like to see as a legacy card in the future, and what would it do? So something that's like currently modern that I think oh. could uh, could already use a legacy card. Oh man, um, something that's well not just currently modern. He says, uh, oh yeah, but from the current modern modern the modern okay. world. Yeah. All right. Well, that that changes my answer a little bit because I was thinking like the current meta, um, which I would much rather see something from like the current modern instead of the current meta because yeah, man. Uh, Number one for me would be Notorious 001 Lex Luthor. Love wow, the sculpt. I was going to say that one too, dude. Yeah. Nice. Love the nice. sculpt. Dial, I'm not super in love with. And then Trait, he's just like, he's a very simple, un- or he's just a very simple common piece. He's good at what he does. Uh, I would just like to see a more pronounced Lex Luthor, like get like a legacy version where maybe he's got like two or three traits. And then Mirror Master, I feel like, gosh, why can we yeah. not get that guy? Yeah, like we just need to do the Loki or Doctor Fate thing where he can just add the, like the bystanders or something. I don't know what we got to do to him, but something like that for sure. Um, here's a quick: Do you think we'll ever see a legacy for an Iconics? Like, let's say like four years from now. Ooh. Do you think we could see a legacy for like the Snap Thanos or like the Man. Hall of Armors or something? Like maybe. Honestly, yeah, we could, I guess, if you think that they're just like an LE and we've already gotten a legacy for like that Thor's chariot. So like maybe I would I would hope not, though. I feel like Iconic should never need a legacy because feel, yeah, they were done. Take away from like correctly their, the first time. Yeah. yeah from like their uh, and then their next card wouldn't have all the cool stuff that their first card had and everything. So. I don't know. I don't know if Iconic should get legacies. Uh, uh, they should totally legacy Ultra Chase Mephisto. Oh, that yeah. That would yeah. be hilarious. Just kidding. Don't Please don't do that. <laughs> the um, highest rarity thing. Um, yeah, the highest rarity thing. The I'd be cool with legacy literally everything, every super rare, I should say, from Batman Team Up. I feel like yeah. I think there's like three, three or four super rares from that set that are like good enough on their own and i think the rest kind of just need like an overhaul like dexter dexter is like the uh, gator loki of that set you know where he's just i don't know why this yeah is super dude rare. he doesn't need to be so expensive he doesn't need to be super rare yeah i agree and then like i uh, would i would like a dexter legacy card to make him like just lower point costed yeah larflees is another one where I love the character. I love the idea of like him being equipped with the ring and maybe pulling his stuff off. But unless I'm playing a four or five hundred point game, he just does not feel like Larflees to me because I have to play him yeah. at full power with like another two hundred points of like support kind of stuff. I cannot like play him at one set. Like I can't. He can't be over half my three hundred point build and still manage to do anything. But then, I mean, like, Saint Walker's, like, really good. Prime Batman and even the non-Prime Batman are really good. Sinestro is another one where he's just on, like, the cusp of being good to me. Like, being really good version of Sinestro. But there's just, like, something that just does not hit right for me. I don't know what it is. I don't sure. know why. Uh, can we legacy card the Disney Plus Watcher LE figure? And make it so he can make them like have some team building aspect of the Guardians of the Multiverse. I would love that. And then also a lower point line. I feel like click five is perfect for a lower point line. It's where he's like right after his stop, somewhere in there, right after he loses charge. A lower point line where he's all about being a team builder. I know that all the other watchers were supposed to be like supporty, and this is supposed to be like, I'm gonna freaking punch you, man. I'm the watcher and I'm breaking my oath and I'm gonna mess you up. But I also feel like he could be a little bit better at messing you up as well. So I would like to see this watcher get a legacy card where he has the whole I make a team and then also I am better at messing you up. I think that would be I think that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Knock back into reality. Oh, there goes Ultron yeah. gravity. Something oh like that. Oh my gosh. Oh goodness gracious. I think there's a hand yeah, there's definitely a handful of figures you probably think of right now in modern that could use a legacy card. 
like just just to see what they would do that would be like changed it would be really fun but all right robin king i don't want him to be remade i don't like robin <laughs> king but that dial is not not great so no. if you want someone wanted to make a legacy car for robin king and make him better but i would also be like man why are we getting a legacy car for robin king at the same time they, I'd be like man he could their, be better uh, but man bat metal stuff yeah i'm dumb I'm good at bat metal i'm i'll be fine I'll be be solid. If there's no more bad metal, that's okay. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Notorious had like, a of. really solid super rare set. Like, yeah, really only solid. A few rares. misses, whereas Batman team up feels like it's mostly misses and only a few good. Uh, that's just my personal like, kind of like feeling, whatever. But sure. no, something they should never do a legacy card for is like something like Two Face, where there's an A and a B. Like that oh geez, rough. gosh! And you can't play one of them. Yeah, only one's modern. Ugh, that would be bad. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, jump on to the last question here. Old is own Bill. What wins a three hundred point modern team or a four hundred point theme team? The theme team could be either silver or modern. Just curious about your opinions. I mean, is he saying like <sighs> if I played a three hundred point team versus a four hundred point team? I think a four hundred point team probably beats the three hundred point team. I think he. So the restriction I get that of has theme, to be theme. I get that it has to be yeah. theme, but okay. So what? I think he's. I don't think he's just saying like has to oh, be like theme. A theme. I think like, it's like also it's a Highlander. theme format yeah. and Highlander. So I, I'm. I'm assuming we're going with like Highlander. So it's like slightly more restrictive. Has to like they all have to have the printed keywords. So none of the like X Men shenanigan stuff. Um, adding it could be either silver. I think. 400 point mod actually no i think it just either way 400 point theme takes it i think there's enough stuff that like 300 modern that was a lot like puts in a ton of work but i think i think 400 points just gives you way too much extra stuff and i think that takes it i feel like yeah man just having an extra i mean it's an extra 100 points yeah like that's that's pretty good yeah Unless I'm taking crazy pills, last time I checked, that's pretty good. I think silver opens it up to some real nasty craziness while also still allowing, like, the craziness from modern. Gosh, like, Alex won 300 modern with a symbiote theme, right? I mean, yeah, it's true. And, yeah, that was a symbiote theme, and, oh, that's why I'm looking at my own builds. I'm not looking at other people's builds. Oh gosh, it's funny. Okay, Very champion nice. clicks nice. open apples and oranges. That was the only four hundred point theme. So, okay, so George did the the apples side, the winning theme build. So, his was mystical theme with Arachnite, Ghost Rider, Blackheart, Iron Inquisitor, Mephisto, Madam Web, Green Lantern, uh, Legacy Green Lantern, Daredevil Legacy. Yeah, I feel like I feel like that just takes out literally any 300 modern team it just has like enough stuff up, man if you consider it like it also gets an extra action yeah. like huh yeah i mean pretty, you've got a rat knight at, it's literally 300 point of ghost rider with bucky's arm blackheart iron inquisitor mephisto with the snestro core ring madam web uh the legacy green lantern legacy daredevil and then like that's the three hundred team, three hundred point team you have to face, and then he's just throwing on hundred point Arachnite as well, which is an insane added thing that you have to deal with. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's, I don't know, it'd be hilarious to to get a couple people to be willing to like take on this task and actually test it out. But I have a feeling that four hundred point theme is just always going to take it. I feel like yeah, I feel like it's got to just it's too strong, it's too good. But uh, that is all the questions we have. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you so much, Wesley and Luke, for getting those questions in this week. Grand old time. Good old questions. And we appreciate it. You know what else we appreciate, though? Oh, what's that? Some good deals. That's <laughs> right. We uh, we here at Dial H, we really appreciate a good savings on something. So whether it's uh, a Valentine's Day special Get your duos like Absorbing Man and Titania. It's a good legacy <laughs> pick. Uh, oh. Batgirl and Nightwing. Batman Green Arrow. Big Barda, Mr. Mir... Wait, one of these things isn't like the other. Mm. Batman Green Arrow. 
Hmm. Whoa. Uh, interesting. <laughs> no, uh, Captain America, Bucky, Blue Beetle, Booster, Gold. They've got all the duo figures on sale, and it's a pretty decent sale. Uh, if you've ever wanted to pick up some of these, I have almost all of them because I love these duo fi- uh, figs. I loved them back when Duo Attack was a mechanic, and I still love them because the sculpts are just awesome. But check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 to save 5% off when you do. From all of my testing, it's applicable for pretty much anything. Hey, they got Hawk and Dove, and it's like OG Ooh. Dove. Hmm. It is just an uncommon, but still not one that I have. Um, I but yeah, check them out. CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 when you do to save an extra 5%. Pretty good deal. And you know what else is a pretty good deal? If you go to shop.wizkids.com, you can use code DIALH10 to save 10% off of most of your Heroclix orders. won't work on certain pre-release items or iconics or specialty figures, but it can work on things like, oh, I don't know... Um, uh, buy a brick and get a free Captain America bundle. Is Ooh. that a, I guess it's not a bundle. It's just a, it's just a Promotion. sale. But uh, yeah. yeah, it'll still it'll it'll work on stuff like that. It'll work on uh, things that have been out for a little while that you wanna you wanna pick up. Things that you uh, didn't get it the first time around. So pretty solid code gets you ten percent off. That of course is dial H ten. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening to the show. We appreciate it, and if you want to write a review, ooh, ah, a little iTunes review, a little Spotify review, let us know how what you're enjoying about the show, what you think of it. We always appreciate that. So, thanks. Stay tuned for next week. Don't know what that show's going to be, but there's definitely going to be one. So, like always, happy trails. So, if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Not going there. That's how it works. Over oh, yeah. six oh, people right. think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of